Hello everyone, uh, this is Sosnios uh, and I'm back again with another video uh, and my channel is called Kingdom Channel. As you all know, I post uh, messages on a regular basis and uh, this is another video that I have come to share with you a very, very important message that uh, I'm sure most of you will be very, very interested to listen. As you know that the coronavirus has brought the nation to a lockdown. Amazingly, nobody really thought that such kind of things can happen in such a short time. Uh, and, you know, the streets are empty. The government has, uh, you know, the government is very concerned. And here uh, the government has ordered everyone to stay at home. Uh, as you know, in Italy, people are dying like flies. It's just amazing that the government is a trust. They had one of uh, they have one of the best uh, you know health uh, national health system, but it is just failing because um, the outbreak is is so uh, fast. It is actually becoming very uncontrollable. So, you know, um, I'm not here really to tell you you know how to wash your hands and how to protect yourself. You know, there's plenty of information uh, you can find that on the internet. I'm here to to minister to actually. Sh share with you to look at this circumstance that is going on right now from a whole new different perspective which many times people fail to do we shouldn't just look at things from the nash you know uh you know just from the uh from exp you know from the situational you know a lot of people say uh you know the coronavirus started because of a monkey because of a snake because of the chinese there are so many excuses that we give and we're trying to just rationalize and say it's just you know it's just something that happened and it's just going to go away that there is really no purpose behind it but uh, i'm here to share with you an amazing news from the bible as you know that i minister messages from the bible the Bible actually has a very similar story that happened in the ancient world. And it didn't just happen once, it happened repeatedly uh, throughout the history of humans. Ever since we have, you know, ever since we've known to be here on earth, there's always been a story where God actually sent a plague or a storm or a flood or a fire, uh, you know, in order to judge or to get people's attention. Uh, in order to call people to repentance. God has done it before. This is not the first time. I know that maybe in our days, in our ages, ever since we've been born, we've never heard such a thing, but it has happened. It, it's not just one or two stories. There's plenty of stories that I can share with you in the Bible where God actually, uh, uh, you know, brought some, some kind of, uh, you know, a storm and a plague that actually brought the whole nation to a lockdown. So it is very important that we look at the circumstances that we're going through right now from a spiritual perspective. Let's not just look at it just rationally and say, you know, it's just a virus. You know, what's the big deal? I'm telling you it's a big deal. Go out and look at the streets. The streets are empty. The restaurants are closed. I've never seen, I live in London and I've never seen London like this. I've never seen England. I've never seen any country uh, you know, in a standstill, in such a lockdown uh, in the state that we are in right now. It's panic. People are actually very concerned. Many people are actually being, you know, infected with the virus. I work in hospital. Uh, the, the hospital that I work is, is in a, you know, there's so many things to organize. They don't even know how to control these things. There's so much concern. And, uh, and as a result of that, the government has actually ordered everyone to stay at home. Don't go out. So if you go out and look at the streets, it's really amazing. You know, you've, ne you've never see anything like this before. So what I'm going to share with you now is that how we look at this thing is really very important. If we just look at it as some kind of just, you know, some situation that just happened and it will just go away, we're going to fail to learn, I believe, a very, very important lesson. Uh, and... and one of the, the most amazing story in the Bible is the book of Exodus. The story of the Egyptians and the Israelis is one of the most famous story in the book of Exodus, where God actually brought 10 plagues uh, and literally uh, take the people of Israel out of that nation. And that, those plagues that came literally brought a lockdown and the nation couldn't do anything. No government no physician, no, uh, you know, the philosophers and the sorcerers, the magicians, no one could actually brought any solution 
to to uh, to the plague that God has brought. And we are actually in a very similar situation right now that governments and doctors and uh, you know anyone can does not really have an answer except to say sit at home and just you know pray and hope that somehow this thing will go away. And I believe that God's hand is behind it. God is actually saying something to us, to the world. Uh, unfortunately, people are not actually, they're not actually listening to God's words. People don't have time for God nowadays. People are actually busy in their everyday life, going to party, uh, you know, going to the football stadium, watching sports, watching TV, uh, watching, you know, going to the pub, drinking, just enjoying, uh, you know, life and never really questioning why am I here? You know, is the way we're living uh, pleasing to God? Are we living in such a way that glorifies God? Do we give honor to the God that created us? Do we celebrate Him? Do we celebrate life? Do we, do we recognize that there is a God that created this universe and ultimately everyone is accountable to Him? Ultimately, God is actually in control of everything uh, you know, that, that is happening in this planet. There's nothing that happens without the knowledge of God. That doesn't mean that God actually causes evil to happen, but God knows even when evil happens. And in fact, in some cases, such kind of plague, when it came to the world, God's hand was actually behind it. God actually was the one who orchestrated to actually brought the whole nation to a standstill so that everyone could be sitting at home and think that you know why am i here you know am i living the right way am i giving honor to god is god saying something to us we must make the effort to listen to it we must make the effort to see this thing beyond the natural perspective we should be looking at it from a spiritual from a whole new dimension because i believe that god is saying something when this uh, when god sent a plague to the egyptians the egyptians were a very powerful nation they they had their own language, they had their own literature, they had their own custom, they had their own religion, they had their own government. And especially in terms of religion, they worshipped different kinds of gods. They had so many gods. Uh, I mean, the Egyptians gods, you know them until now. They're in the history. They had so many gods. And God was actually trying to show them, hey, I am the only God. I am the God that created the heavens and the earth. That God was actually the God who created Adam and Eve. He was the, the, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He was a very specific God and he came and he revealed himself to Moses and he told Moses to go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And if you don't let my people go, obviously, I'm going to intervene with, uh, you know, with a plague. And the Egyptians, as you know, they were very controlling at that time. They did not allow the, uh, the people of Israel to practice their own faith, their own religion, uh, and to live in a way that God wants them to live. And as a result of that, God actually had to command Pharaoh, he had to command the Egyptians to let his people go. It is the same thing that is happening right now. In our days, we're having difficulty of, uh, you know, preaching truth. There is so much immorality, there is so much cruelty, there is so much oppression, there is so much wickedness. And uh, the church has a message. We have a message to the world. God actually has a message to the world. People need to repent. Nations need to repent. Governments need to repent. We need to repent and we need to return to God. If not, God will intervene. And I'm telling you, the way he will intervene is going to be uh, the way we're looking at it. It doesn't feel nice. It doesn't feel nice for people to be infected virus out of nowhere and to be sleeping in hospital and dying within uh, two or three hours. In Italy, just 600 people just died in one night. Just in one night, 600 people. That's, that is a very high number of people. And thousands of people now across the world are actually getting infected and we don't even know how this thing is going to stop. It is only by the mercy of God that you know we're going uh, gonna to overcome these things. So, I believe God is saying something. I believe God is communicating. Wherever you are, God is saying to you, you know, how are you living? Are you giving honor to God? Do you worship God? Do you, uh, do you live life for the purpose of glorifying God or is it just to satisfy your own need? Are you involved in any kind of sin, in any kind of wickedness and cruelty? 
God wants us to return. That's why God sent his only begotten son, Jesus, whom people crucified in their days. They killed him. He sent his son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. People were so wicked, they crucified Jesus. They, they abused him, they tortured him, and they killed him. But amazingly, Jesus rose on the third day and still the gospel of Jesus Christ is being preached across the world. Jesus even actually prophesied that there's going to be war. There's going to be all kinds of turmoil, sickness, disease, famine is going to be upon the world until the day that he comes back and restore, uh, you know, restore his kingdom. There's going to be trouble. He, predict, he predicted and it is happening. And I believe that there's going to be more. According to the Bible, there's going to be more suffering to come. If you think that the coronavirus is the worst thing that happened to the world, I believe there's going to be days where even hiding in our own house is not going to be enough. You can't actually hide from some of the troubles that will come upon the world. There's going to be so many suffering, sufferings that's never been heard, never been seen before. That is how the Bible puts it. There's going to be suffering. There's going to be problems upon the world. We need to return to God. We need to listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ. God sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God sent his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God wants us to believe in his son, to believe in Jesus Christ whom, uh, who, who died on the cross for the sins of the world. He died for your sin. So that you may repent and you may return to God and give your life to God and live for the glory of God. We need to repent from our wicked ways. I'm telling you, people are actually have become so selfish. We live in a very selfish life. People want to just, even now people are missing, they don't miss church. They miss going to the football match or miss going to the cinema or going to, uh, you know, the party and uh, going to the pubs and drinking alcohol and smoking and you know, doing all kinds of things. This is the things that people miss. But we are created for the glory of God. We are created to live for God, to worship God, to glorify Him. I mean, Sundays should actually be looking like this. The stands, you know, the lockdown that's going on right now. If you go out on the street, there's no one. All the shops are closed. Sundays should be like this. We should be, uh, you know, we should be, uh, that should be a Sabbath day. A Sabbath day is a day where you don't work. You sit down, you reflect. You think, you, you, know, you, you thank God that He has given you the energy to work for six days. It's a day to sit down and to reflect. But nowadays, Sunday is actually the most busiest day. Seven days people are working, coming in and out. Life is so busy that God actually had to intervene in some kind of way to bring us to a lockdown so that everyone can sit at home and think. Think for one moment. Nations and governments should be thinking right now, what is going on? What is God saying to us? And I just want to share this message to you. And I believe, you know, we should not let this thing just pass without actually understanding of what exactly is going on. I believe that God is speaking to you right now. Wherever you are, just, you know, repent of your sin. Invite Jesus into your life and say, Lord Jesus, you know, I want to live for your life. I want to live for the purpose that you've created me. You know, read the Bible, read the Bible, go to a church where there is a good Bible based church and learn the Bible, pray, come near to God, ask him if he's real, ask him to reveal himself to you. He will reveal himself to you. He will speak to you in a way that you will understand. And I believe this is also a message that God is speaking to you right now, wherever you are. Look at us. We are sitting at home. Everybody is sitting at home today. Nobody can go anywhere, you know, and God is telling you, think. Think for a moment, think about your life, think about the eternal life, think about, you know, uh, why God has put you on earth. We need to return. There's so much sin, there's so much cruelty, so much selfishness. We just love ourselves. We don't, we don't appreciate life enough. And God is saying to you, repent of your sin, return to me. There's only one God. There's so many religions in the world out there. I know there is... Uh, even in, in terms of uh, uh, in Christianity, there's different versions of Christianity. It's so confusing that the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ has been perverted in many ways. But the message of Jesus Christ is very simple. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's what Jesus said. If you want to come to the Father, you have to come to me. If you come to Jesus, 
you will come to the Father, the Father that created everything, the Father who owes everything, the Father of the universe, God. There's only one God. There's not so many religions. There's only one God. People came up with so many different religions, but there is only one religion. There's only one faith. And, and that is the faith that we have in Jesus Christ, in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So uh, thank you very much anyway for, lis for listening. Please pass this message around. And I believe that it will speak to people's heart in, in some ways. And let's use this time to really think, to, to appreciate God. And those of you who haven't invited Jesus Christ into your life, invite Jesus into your life, please. Repent of your sin and say, Lord Jesus, come to my life and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. You've always known the, uh, the news anyway. You know that Jesus Christ died on the cross. You've heard the news, but you've never given your heart to it. And let this be the time that you give your life, you give your mind and invite Jesus into your life. And I believe that this will be the beginning of something really new. And, uh, you know, this coronavirus time should not be passed uh, without actually using the time. So God bless you. Uh, I will be coming back with another video. I usually post with my native language, but I want to post this video to my English speakers. Uh, because I've been asked to do uh, an English video and uh, this is actually a very important time. Uh, I thought I should do a video in English. So God bless you. Share the video, spread the message uh, and say your prayer and receive Jesus into your life. And this is your brother Saucy from Kingdom Channel. God bless you.